Tax what we burn, not what we earn. So I want to talk about what everyone's talking about today, the fiscal cliff. Ah. Okay, it's become a 24-7 debate. Um, and so I want to try to go back in history because you f famously cast the tie-breaking vote mm. in 1993 to pass the Clinton-Gore budget, which raised taxes and cut spending. Mm. So if you were sitting with the Congress today, mm. what would you say to them? Hmm. And what should they be doing? Now, before I answer, remind me, how did the economy do in the Clinton-Gore years? Well, we had a balanced budget, and we had, I think, over 20 million jobs created. <laughs> yeah. So it seemed to be pretty good. And I'll tell you, in, in the political realm, uh, some people don't believe this, but the single most popular proposal w we had was to reduce taxes on working people and lift the higher rate. Let's give an incentive to work, and let's ask the the most fortunate in our society, including me and you, yep. uh, to, to, to do our fair share. Uh, and we ought to do that again, absolutely. And the solution to the fiscal cliff is obviously going to be a combination of new revenue and, uh, and spending cuts. And the president is making it very clear that he's holding firm uh, insisting that the that the highest uh, yep, top two earner, earners, uh, the most mm -hmm. fortunate in our society economically, yep. uh, are going to have to pay more. But you know, the fiscal cliff does have a relationship to the climate cliff, and one way to back away from the climate cliff and the fiscal cliff is with a tax on carbon. Yep. And you can reduce other taxes to further give a break to middle-income families, but tax, tax what we burn, not what we earn. Well, dirty energy causes dirty weather. All storms are now changed because of the enormous quantity of man-made global warming pollution.